So I'm super excited to be sitting here with Darren Licardo, who's VP of Engineering at DJI. We're going to talk to a real engineer about these flying robots. And you guys have two new products that you guys are announcing today, uh, one of which is sitting right in front of us. This looks to me just like the Phantom 4, but uh, there's a lot more technology in here. This is the P4 Pro? That's right. This is the P4 Pro. Uh, is very much similar in design language to the P4. Uh, but we've added uh, quite a few new features that we think are quite exciting. Um, the main thing, of course, is this is a flying camera, and we've improved the camera. It now is a one-inch sensor with a mechanical uh, shutter uh, and a slightly narrower field of view, 24 millimeter equivalent uh, lens. So we think that'll be a nice imaging upgrade for uh, getting those those shots. I, that's a big deal for me because uh, I love using the, the Phantoms as c cinema cameras, and when you talk about a one-inch side sensor, that's like something on my like Sony RX100. You're getting mm -hmm. real low light potential. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Almost close to 12 uh, stops of dynamic range, so it'll be a, a very nice low light sensor. And so that's a camera package here. It's still on your three-axis stabilizing gimbal. Um, I do see that it's, it protrudes a little bit. It's not that much bigger. And the front, you're saying it looks like a, it's an f2.8 lens? Yep, that's right, down to f2.8. Yeah, so slightly, you know, uh, also very integrated gimbal system. Um, slightly, slightly bigger, uh, obviously, to support the new imager. Um, but otherwise, gimbal dynamics um, actually improved relative to the existing system. So you should get very nice, stable footage, even with the slightly narrower field of view. Right, bigger sensor, you get better low light. Also, you can get shallower depth of field. So if you yeah. bring this closer to your subject, to your subject. Um, do yeah. you have focus controls on this? Like you would uh, on, on the Inspire? Uh, so very similar to the Mavic, it'll be point, point to focus control. Point to focus, yeah. nice, nice. Now what type of video can you record with this new So this will do 4K at 60 frames a second, so also very nice uh, nice for higher speed, higher mm. speed work. And is it higher bit rates? How are you yeah. compressing that footage? Uh, um, higher bit rates, uh, 100, 100 megabit um, uh, bit rates now, so a little bit higher. Uh, still, uh, still pretty uh, reasonable from a comp compression perspective. So I'm excited to test yeah. that out. So, but that's not the only new camera system on this. That's right. There's a ton of other improvements to this vehicle. So, uh, with P4, we introduced uh, passive stereo imaging as collision avoidance technology. We have a stereo pair of imagers in front and also looking down. Uh, to P4 Pro, now we've added that to the back, uh, so we have that same stereo imaging set up now looking rearward, which allows you to get that reverse tracking shot that everyone likes to do um, while still having a collision avoidance functionality. So you can pull the throttle back, and yep. even at max speed, uh, now it will stop or move around objects when it's flying backwards. Right now, not in sport mode, of course. Just like you know, yep. just like P4, um, uh, sport mode gets you higher speed without collision avoidance. But if, as long as you stay in in positioning mode, then you'll get collision avoidance in, in the backward direction as well. That's two very important axes, but yep. what about the other axes? Yeah, so the other axes, we've also added uh, a new sensor that, that uh, we haven't released before. Uh, it's an infrared-based time-of-flight sensor uh, to give you basic uh, distance to the nearest object in the scene on both the left and the right of the vehicle. Uh, so that gives you, you know, some capability to also stay away from, from uh, obstacles on the side and do uh, small maneuvers in terms of return to home uh, and things like that to, uh, to get you back, back home without hitting something. Is it technically still collision avoidance? It, it is still part of the collision avoidance framework. Uh, so we'll, you know, as, you, as you can see, we're gradually expanding overall from a technology perspective our ability to do collision avoidance uh, in different axes of the vehicle. Uh, and of course, as you can imagine, the ultimate goal is to get to complete collision avoidance. All six axes, every angle, you want to have some sensors of some kind. We'll get there. Uh, yeah. In terms of how it's presented to the user, with mm -hmm. the P4, if I was flying close to an object, I would have that kind of the sensor, bars, the yep. bars at the top. Mm -hmm. Is that now... Uh, 360? So you will now get that in the front and in the back. Okay. Uh, the sides is integrated deeper into the system, so you won't get bars directly on the UI. So it's not going to tell you how many meters it is away from not you, but it will side. stop if you're moving full throttle, right. not in sport mode, left right. to right, yeah. it will stop and avoid. That's very cool. Uh, what else is different about the P4 Pro? Uh, so we, we have a, a higher capacity battery now as well, so we mm. up to 30 minutes of flight time if you're using the higher capacity battery. Uh, it is equivalent with the standard P4 battery too, so if you have a P4 already, you can use either the higher capacity battery or a standard battery, um, really really up to, up to you, your choice. In addition to that, we um, also have a uh, controller that we don't have here to show, but we have a new um, RC controller that has a built-in high-luminance display 
uh, so that you don't no longer have to plug in your phone and deal with the phone and the cable system with the existing control setup. And that's an option. That's an option. So you can still you compare and use an existing controller if you still want to use something like an iPad or or some other tablet setup uh, with the the RC. But if you'd like a more sort of ready to go system that's sort of robust and doesn't require dealing with cabling and, and uh, mobile phones, uh, then you can use our new controller that has the built-in display. And that has uh, that has built in the same interface as it's very DJI similar Go? interface. So it'll look and feel very much like DJI Go, effectively mm -hmm. an Android tablet built into the the RC, so that you can uh, just use an all-in-one system. But if you're not plugging your phone in, you wouldn't get like the data that you would get from your phone for uh, environment maps or anything like that, like if, if, with right. your location. Sure. Yeah, the system has Wi-Fi, so you can connect to Wi-Fi um, mm. directly from the RC. Okay, so that's the P4 Pro, but then you also have a finally a sequel follow-up to the Inspire, and Inspire 2. That's right. So we also have the Inspire 2, uh, which is a great update to Inspire. So Inspire is um, more about professional video and, and imagery capture. Uh, one of the points of Inspire is to decouple the creative shot from the flight controller. So you have the unobstructed yaw gimbal underneath the vehicle and the ability to use two remotes, one for the camera operator and one for the pilot. Uh, so we're taking that a step further with Inspire 2 and adding a first-person view camera, uh, two-axis gimbaled camera on the front of the vehicle directly for the pilot. So now the pilot can use the first-person view camera looking forward to do his flying, mm -hmm. uh, and the camera operator has complete independence with the main camera to turn a tracking shot sideways, backwards, whatever, whatever he wants to do. Um, while the pilot doesn't lose, you know, lose a view of where he's flying. And you mean two axis? It's pitch. It's up and down, left and right. No yep. roll yeah. on, on that, yeah. and it's on out the of the view of the second camera. Exactly. Now you say FPV camera. Is that using the same type of wireless technologies as low latency as as with? The existing light, light bridge systems, yep. or is it's that? It's a low low latency um, FPV camera, so you can sort of treat it like an FPV system. Obviously, the Inspire is more of a pro product, but mm. uh, uh, it does give the pilot that direct reactive capability with with the camera system. But it's still a digital system. Vehicle. Still Not, a digital okay. system, leveraging all of our light bridge technology to do the transmission of both the FPV camera and the main gimbal camera down the same same channel. That one signal coming back to your transmitter and the two yep. transmitters now has exactly. both a Two, two 720p feeds? Exactly. Wow. Exactly. And you'll be able to separate those, right? So if the camera operator wants to see just the main camera, you know, right. he probably doesn't care about the, the pilot's camera, he can just focus on that. Uh, the pilot can do picture in picture or focus just on the FPV camera if he just wants to fly the vehicle. Mm. What else is different from the Inspire 2? So Inspire 2, we're adding also an element of collision avoidance system uh, leveraged from basically our P4 line. Uh, it's got two forward-looking cameras, so a stereo pair looking forward and looking down for collision avoidance in the forward and down direction. Uh, and then we're also adding one of our new um, IR time-of-flight sensors to the top of the vehicle for upward tracking, tracking motion on Inspire. Why is that important? Uh, so slightly just gives you some flexibility in configuration. Um, you know, we think there's a variety of different use cases in terms of how people want to fly the vehicle relative to the camera shot. Uh, so, you know, different, having different platforms offer different uh, elements of collision avoidance gives you the flexibility to make that, that choice. Very, very cool. Now, now that we, you know, we have you here, I want to yeah. chat a little more about sure. the technologies that go into these things. Because, yeah, you know, yeah. you guys iterate so quickly. You know, the P4 was only announced you know, earlier this year, and now you, there's the P4 Pro. Um, computer vision seems to be a big deal for DJI. Uh, quadcopters started off in the RC space, people building their own, putting your flight controllers and your speed controllers inside, but now they're full-on robots that can sense the world. Um, how, how does that work, and, and what does the camera see, and where does it go next? That's right. Computer vision is, is a, a core aspect of the intelligence that we're br bringing to these systems, uh, and there's a, a long roadmap ahead to add even more intelligence. Uh, the, you know, the, the main camera now with ActiveTrack uh, we are tracking and identifying and classifying the subject in the scene. Uh, so you'll notice now that uh, when, you, when you drag an active track box, you'll see a little image of a bicycle or a person identifying the type of object that the, the system believes it is. Now, this is important because it drives the kinds of behavior that the vehicle can derive from knowing a little bit about the subject. So if it knows it's a, a pedestrian or a human, uh, it knows it's probably going to be moving a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. uh, it might make uh, sudden movements in different directions. Uh, if it knows it's a bicycle, it's probably moving a little bit faster. It won't make sudden movements in different directions without you know, doing a turning maneuver first. 
Uh, so having that, that knowledge of the subject, just as a human, if you have that knowledge of the subject, you will treat that subject differently from a, a tracking perspective on the vehicle and the camera. Uh, now this system will take that into account to give you the best vantage and viewpoint uh, in active track. And user input wise, you're, you're still dragging that box. Still, if I drag a box yep. around a bicycle, the, your algorithms will think, okay, I know this is, I think it's a bicycle. I'm telling the user I think it's a bicycle. Bicycles move at max like this fast, so if I'm gonna follow it, I'm gonna stay at this distance, and I'm gonna move at this speed and anticipate movements, but I think That's based right. on that kind and of And it's all under the scene automatic, decoupled from the user, so you can continue to think about the creative aspect of, of what you're trying to do with the vehicle and let mm. the flight dynamics take care of itself. Uh, so ultimately, you know, as we see more of this autonomy move into the systems, it allows the user to abstract a little bit more from the vehicle behavior and think more about their mission or their their goal in terms of what they're trying to accomplish. How is like you know you have a stereo system in the front of these and now in the back of it? How is it mapping out the world? How is it trying to understand the world? What are the things that it wants to understand? Yeah, so the, the stereo camera system uh, operates in principle very similar to how humans uh, perceive depth, which is to say uh, two different cameras separated by a distance see slightly different images when they're looking the same direction. Uh, when you use, we use that disparity, image disparity, between those two sensors to build a depth field or a depth map uh, in front of the vehicle. Uh, and then we use that depth map to build a map as, of the world as the vehicle moves around in space and time. So it's not just the image in front of it at that time, it's for that flight it builds a depth map? That's right, so you're building a, building a map that uh, uh, persists in time, which gives the vehicle more capability to do the right kinds of uh, collision avoidance when it returns back to the same location, let's say, mm. in, in the next few minutes. Does that information get stored, is it slowly building a map of the world, or is it just for that flight. It is, it is building a map of the world. It's, it's uh, uh, not going to build a global map of, of mm -hmm. everything it's, it's ever seen. That's, that's not quite practical yet. But, but it is like, based on its GPS and its coordinates. So if I'm flying in my backyard and it has its information of my backyard, I can fly out and with more confidence over time. Over time, yeah. Okay, that's exactly. actually very, very cool. Um, what are the challenges in terms of building a computer vision system? Like the, the first P4, yeah. I, you know, the, the first time we saw this, uh, I saw that it wasn't following me exactly as I wanted. It was losing mm -hmm. tracking at some at some some points. You know, why is it difficult mm -hmm. for to build this kind of system? Sure. Yeah. So this uh, the the vehicle itself is really a collection of of a variety of different subsystems that you know have a spread of engineering disciplines that are important to make them integrated and operational. Uh, so the computer vision element is not just software and algorithms, it's hardware, sensors, it's the silicon for compute uh, that needs to be run to run that software. Uh, and all of those things together as a system, you know, you know make or break really the, the, the product. Uh, and so we, we treat that as a system and design all of those elements to work together. Uh, picking the right silicon is very important depending on the kinds of algorithms that you're trying to run. Uh, a lot of parallel processing is now required to get the kinds of power efficiency and operational efficiency that you need from silicon to run complex computer vision algorithms. So we leverage a lot of parallel processing cores to, to do that uh, and optimize our software and our hardware together as a system. Because you're designing tiny computers, basically. Tiny you're computers Not only that have tiny to robots fly. that fly, yep. but also computers that live inside the robots that share same heat and also the same battery. <laughs> That's exactly right. And in conditions that you don't know what the user's gonna be taking it into. Exactly. From right. very low temperatures to high temperatures or high winds. Exactly. That's, right. that's pretty complex. It's pretty complicated. Yep. Yeah. Wow. So, what, what's next? Uh, what, what, you know, is, is the dreams can we put cameras all around the system? Um, do those algorithms improve over time? Like, what's the user so, experience gonna be like? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, additional autonomy you know, lets you move up the abstraction stack, focus on the creative element of what you're trying to do and mm -hmm. not have to necessarily fly the vehicle when you don't want to. Uh, so we'll continue that roadmap. That's a theme that you know, you're seeing emerge on P4 and now Inspire 2. Uh, and there's lots more down the pipe that, that we'll be adding to uh, uh, really complete you know, the roadmap uh, with a vision of complete collision avoidance uh, uh, someday. So. You know, we saw stereo cameras first pop up in your Matrice line, your, your uh, yeah, production mm -hmm. uh, quads. Um, so that's an example of technology in not a consumer space, moving to consumer space. Mm -hmm. But you also have the, the Mavic, and you have miniaturization, mm -hmm. smaller gimbals. Mm -hmm. you know, are there lessons from that that will eventually make it move mm -hmm. up the chain as well? 
Yeah, our, you know, our R&D shares uh, core technologies across all the product lines. So the innovations you see with the latest products you know, proliferate into every new product that we build. Uh, and Mavic in particular um, really has all the functionality of the P4 and more uh, with the additional active track features. Uh, and that will now proliferate into the Inspire 2 and the P4 Pro. Uh, so those roadmaps um, uh, um, really leapfrog off of each other to, to, for us to build the best products. Our, our mission is about aggressive innovation. Uh, we, don't, we don't hold back. We're going to build the absolute best product we can and get it to you as soon as possible. Uh, the Mavic you know, is also partially about miniaturization. Uh, which is very difficult from an engineering perspective, how to collapse all of that hardware and software into a smaller system. Um, and that miniaturization also means that for uh, a bigger vehicle, uh, now you have less weight and therefore more flight time potential um, by leveraging the same miniaturization technologies. Yeah, you say aggressive innovation, and that's, I think, to put it like you, you guys put out a lot of products. It's an understatement because. Yeah. You know, P4, P3. You guys, in a couple of years, it's changed. Like mm -hmm. it looks, the functionality is generations beyond mm -hmm. that of the P2. From a consumer standpoint, mm -hmm. and that's exciting mm -hmm. as an, to see these things come out. But also, you want to be reassured that you're going to be able to get something and be able to use it and have fun with it and, mm -hmm. and not be outdated. Mm -hmm. uh, when mm -hmm. you're designing the quadcopters, mm -hmm. there's so many features that you can look into improving battery mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. speed, you know, computer vision. Mm -hmm. What are the priorities, mm -hmm. and what are the things that are, you know, if you had to choose between battery life or a, a more powerful computer vision system, mm -hmm. what do you choose? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that choice is sometimes tough and really depends on the application you're going for. That's one of the reasons we build a range of products in both size, weight, power, camera capability, is to give you some level of choice depending on your mission. Because uh, there are trade-off spaces between these mm -hmm. things, and, uh, you know, over time, uh, you know, we move the bar by you know improving technology and moving that trade-off space, you know, up and up the stack. Uh, but still, given any specific class of product, you still have those those choices to make. Um, and we're we're innovating across that range of products. We leverage um, you know the core technologies across these range of products, and those core technologies um, give us the capabilities to scale uh, the, the the system to different sizes and weight classes. Yeah, you guys make you know excellent quadcopters, um, but in your RD, do you look beyond quadcopters? Are you thinking about other ways do these technologies apply to other type of robotics? They absolutely do. So we are we are a robotics company at heart, and we uh, all of these core technologies apply to a variety of different robotic applications: um, small things that fly, big things that fly, things that run around on the ground. Uh, uh, you name it; it's all in the realm of possibility. Well, I know you can't talk about future products, but that's definitely something enticing to think about and for yeah. us to speculate about. Thank you yeah. so much, Darren, My for pleasure. chatting with me about the new products and giving us some insight into these technologies. My pleasure.